Good morning, everybody. It is wonderful to have you with us in worship this morning. Let's take a moment to um, greet all of our online viewers this morning. So there's two cameras in the back. Say hi, good morning to everybody online. We are happy to have you with us no matter where you're joining us from this morning. Thank you for being here. As always, to begin worship, We um, like to prepare ourselves, our hearts, and our minds, no matter how we arrived here, so that we are fully present and ready and focused to worship God. And so to do that this morning, I would invite you to take a deep breath. As you take a few deep breaths and you begin to still your heart and mind, Focus on God's presence in this place with you this morning. As you keep taking those deep breaths, Remember that the one that gives you that breath is as close as the breath in your nose and your lungs 
is alive and active in this room and in this world. Breathe in peace. Breathe out everything that prohibits your peace. Especially this morning, breathe in peace and breathe out your distractions. The things on your mind, the to-do lists, the tasks set before you today. I invite you to listen to these very familiar words from Luke. While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village. A woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. But by contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for the meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to prepare everything by myself? Tell her to help me. The Lord said, Martha, dear Martha, you are distracted by many things. Only one thing is necessary. I'll take a minute to meditate on the distractions we may have and the things that Jesus is telling you is necessary this morning. We pray, gracious God, that you might open us to your presence, that we might hear your calling, we might feel your nudges, you might free us from our distractions, from our anxieties, from everything that holds us back from worshiping you, that our worship might be full of joy, that we might know that you are present with us, that we are your beloved, and that is reciprocated in our worship to you today. It is in your most holy name that we pray. Amen.
please join me in this prayer of confession. It is easy to scoff, merciful one, when we behold those with unflinching faith and unquestioned assurance of your power. How often we have laughed like the mourners in Jairus' house when told that death will be swallowed up in the power of your love. Heal not only our illnesses and ailments, Holy One. Heal our fickleness of heart and the inconsistency of our faith. As we yearn for your healing touch, help us wait to be longing more than those who wait for the morning. Amen. Amen. Place your hope in God, our source of life, for God is the great physician whose steadfast love has the power to redeem. Give thanks to the one who hears our prayers and makes us well. Amen. You may be seated, and we're going to invite the kids to come up this morning. guys this morning yeah. everybody good okay would you like to be my microphone holder because I'm gonna have really busy hands that will that would help me out so much um, we've been talking a lot about the story of the Good Samaritan do you guys remember that story yeah. what, what 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 things do you remember happened in that story there was a man he was walking what happened to him go ahead Yeah, he got beat up, right? And then he was laying there for help. And a first man walks by from the church. And does he help him? No. no, he doesn't help him, does he? And then another person walks by. Do they help him? No. no. And then a third person walks by. Do they help him? Yes. yes, they help him, right? Do you remember what the two groups of people are called um, in that story? The last person that helps. Yeah. Yes, Samaritan. Great job. And um, so there's two groups of people in that story, right? The man laying on the road is Jewish. So he's from one group of people. And the Samaritan that helps him is from another group of people. And they didn't get along, right? Do you remember that? So there's kind of us and them. You know what that means? Like this is us up here, right? And that's them out there, right? Okay. So I want you to imagine with me all these groups of us and them. And then we're looking at right now us and them, but I wonder if there's more people, right? So pretend that you have like a telescope, and we're going to zoom out a little bit. What sound would your telescope make? No, it's a noiseless one. What sound does your telescope make, Jackson? No noise? Okay, they're electronic. Okay, so we're just zooming out. Now, if we zoomed out from the congregation, where would we be? What's this? A church. Mm -hmm. What church? Yeah. Our church, right? Is this our church? Okay, so if we zoomed out and now we're at our church, then we would be the inside people, right? That would be us. And so all the people outside of this church must be them, right? Yeah? Okay, maybe. Do you think there's more people than that outside the church? Yeah. Okay, so zoom out a little bit more. Get, get your telescope out. There you go. Okay. Zoom out a little bit. Where would we be? What's this? Iowa. Iowa. This is where we live, right? State of Iowa? Okay. So all the people in Iowa must be us, and everybody outside of Iowa must be them. Wait, are there more people outside of Iowa? Yeah. There are? Okay. Keep so keep zooming. Where are we at now? What is this? The American flag, right? The US. So all the people inside the US must be us. Haha, <laughs> get it? And then all the people outside <laughs> nope. <laughs> 
all the people outside the U.S. is? Yeah. Right. But wait, are there more people outside of the U.S.? Yeah. There are? Okay, so zoom out. Where are we at now? What is this? And what's, what's on the back side? <laughs> the whole world, right? Yeah, the, this, the whole thing. Millions of people. Yes. Millions. So everybody on the earth is us. Wait, are there people outside the earth? Yeah, they might be in space right now. Yeah. Good answer. Okay, so this one's hard. I don't think I could hold all of that. So we're going to count to three and see where we zoom out to. Are you ready? One, two, three. Now where are we at? Oh, look at that. It's the whole solar system, right? Very good. Now what's us? Everything, right? Everything. Yes. Thank you so much. Um. Everything is us, right? It's not just us. It's not just us in the church. It's not just us in Stewart. It's not just us in the United States. The whole entire world beyond is all us. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach us a lot of times is that there's no us in them. It's just us, right? We're all part of God's family. Yeah? That's pretty cool, right? I think so too. Do you guys want to pray with me? Let's pray. Dear God... We thank you for your love. love. And every time I want you to say us, I want you to repeat it with me, okay? Everybody in the church is us. Us. Everybody in our state is us. us. Everybody in our country is us. Everybody in our world is us. There is no us in them. There's only us. We thank you for the reminder that we are us. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen. (laughs) Thank you so much. Us and amen. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for coming up.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, we pray that you might still our hearts and minds, you might open our ears, that we might hear your word and your message to us today, that it might fall upon our hearts without resistance, we might know that this message is for us, and that you might use it to mold us and to make us more like your son, Jesus Christ. It is in his most holy name that we pray. Amen. Two weeks ago, we started the neighbor charts, right? Most of us did. Um, I'm just wondering if anybody filled in a box of a name of someone you did not know two weeks ago. Has anyone had any conversation and filled in a name of somebody you didn't know? You still got plenty of time, so that's... that's what? Yes. <laughs> so if you haven't, um, you still have plenty of time. My hope is that you are seeing the importance of getting to know your neighbors and who they are. We know that it's important, but statistically we've been shown that people who know their neighbors, know their neighbors' names, enjoy a longer and better quality of life. So that alone should be enough reason for you to know the people who live around you. But also crime is 80% lower in neighborhoods where people know each other's names. And our neighbors are often our first responders when there is disaster or crisis because our systems are overwhelmed. It is important for us to know who we live beside, literally our neighbors. This is not the first time that I've gone through this experiment of getting to know the people who live beside you with a group of, of other people. One time, I was in a group um, who did this, and a lady came back the next week ecstatic because they had learned a name of their neighbor, and, um, and they shared that with the group. And so we were all very excited, and wow, somebody took the initiative and went out and had a conversation with their neighbor and got to know them. And so I said, tell us about it. How did it go? Uh, how, what was the conversation like? How did you start it? Oh, I didn't actually talk to them. I asked somebody else who knew who the neighbors were, and then I wrote the name on, <laughs> on the chart. And it was a little defeating. But I understand why it's tempting to do that, Right? You may have known your neighbor's names at one time, but you haven't talked to them for years, and so maybe you forgot what their names were. And now it's embarrassing to go ask what their name is. Maybe you feel conflicted because as we've been talking, you see the importance of knowing the people who live beside you, and at the same time, adding one more relationship or several more relationships of all your neighbors to your life is completely overwhelming. The thought of that is, un is overwhelming. I completely understand that. A question I want us to wrestle with today is do we live at a pace that allows us to be available to those around us? Do we live at a pace that allows us to love our neighbors? Because when we start to do this experiment, no matter what group of people we are in, the number one um, pushback that always comes up is time. I already don't have enough time. And I don't have time to add more relationships and getting to know more people to my schedule. We live in a world that values production and activity and results and going from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. We have so many inboxes and voicemails to check, to-do lists, tasks, all the things to check off, that it really maxes us out. And what's kind of odd is that we live in a time where there are more time-saving devices than ever before. My, but in the same manner, have you ever sat around and asked yourself, what am I going to do with all this extra time that I have? Right? I highly doubt any of you ask yourself that question. 
My children are horrified when my husband and I talk about the means of communication that was available to us when we were in high school and college. In high school, I tell them we didn't have cell phones. There were a few times I had to go to the Casey's payphone and tell my, my parents what I was doing. Because if I didn't call them, they didn't know. It was an amazing time to be alive, right? <laughs> but we did not have cell phones. We did not have text messaging. We did not have the Life360 app to track where the kids were at all times. In college, we used chat rooms on an old box computer. It was ancient communication. We did not have the kind of money to make telephone calls on the corded telephone in my room. And I had to walk all the way to the library to use the computer to get on a chat room. Today, I can call any of you on the phone as I'm driving down the road. I can send a text message, not while I'm driving, but I will send a text message to you, and you'll get it instantly, right? We can go home at night and watch an entire season of television on TV, and we can skip all the commercials and just zoom right through it. We should have a lot of extra time on our hands with all these extra time-saving things, but we don't. Because we are also, at this time, shove more and more and more and more into our schedules probably than we ever have before. We are very busy. We are overscheduled often. And the thought of adding more relationships to our already very long tasks list can be very, make me very anxious, a little stressed. We do not like to be interrupted because an interruption means that we are going to fall behind on all those things that we have to do. But this is not how Jesus demonstrated living life. And I want you to listen for that in this text from Mark. What is happening is Jesus has just healed a man that was possessed by a legion of demons. And that's a hard story to forget. He cast the demons into the pigs. It doesn't end well for the pigs. And he gets in a boat and goes to cross the lake to do some more teaching. This is where we pick up in Mark 5, verse 21. Jesus crossed the lake again, and on the other side, there was a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Jairus, one of the synagogue leaders, came forward, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, and he pleaded with him, My daughter is about to die. Please come and place your hands on her so that she can be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A swarm of people were following Jesus, crowding in on him, and a woman was there who had been bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a lot under the care of many doctors and had spent everything she had without getting any better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Because she heard about Jesus, she came up from behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. And she was thinking, if I can just touch his clothes... I'll be healed. Her bleeding stopped immediately, and she sensed in her body that her illness had been healed. At that very moment, Jesus recognized the power had gone out from him, and he turned in the crowd, and he said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said, Do you not see all the people that are pressing up against you? And you asked, Who touched me? But Jesus looked around carefully to see who had done it. The woman was full of fear and trembling and came forward. Knowing what had happened to her, she fell down in front of Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he responded, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace, healed from your disease. While Jesus was speaking with her, messengers came and told him, told the synagogue leader, Jairus, your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher any longer. Jesus overheard the report and said to the synagogue leader, Do not be afraid, just keep trusting. And so they went to Jairus' house. Jesus said to the young girl, Get up and walk. She was 12 years old. They were shocked. She was healed. You hear the scripture, and there are amazing miracles in there, yes? But how many times do you notice Jesus being interrupted in what he's doing? He's crossing the lake to go teach a group of people, and he is interrupted by Jairus, 
who says, my daughter is dying, I need you to come right now. Jesus leaves the group of people to go to Jairus' house to heal his daughter. On the way to heal the daughter, he is interrupted by a woman in need of healing. He stops the journey to ask who it was and to speak with her to affirm that she is healed. He's healing the woman and speaking to her, and he's interrupted yet again. Jesus, don't worry about going any further. It's too late. He presses forward and heals the girl. So many interruptions in a very important man's life. Jesus had time for interruptions. Do we? Do we live at a pace of life that allows for interruptions? Or are we so overscheduled and maxed that interruptions anger us? Do we ever look at Jesus and think, wow, he was really rushed and hurried? No. Do we also ever look at Jesus and say, he really should have got more done? No. Jesus shows us this example of what living at a healthy rhythm looks like in tune to the needs of people around us, to focus on the best thing instead of all of the things. Hurry is very toxic to our relationships. There's this great quote in a book called The Life You've Always Wanted, where John Ortberg, the author, talks about hurry sickness. He says, love and hurry are fundamentally incompatible. Love always takes time. And time is the one thing hurried people do not have. If we are going to live out the great commandment and love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves, love the people that God has put around us, it is going to take our time. It will require us to slow down. It will require us to live at a pace that is interruptible. And this is not how most of the U.S. lives. But as I said before, time is always our biggest pushback in loving our neighbors as Jesus asked. It requires us to look at our calendars and compare it with the great commandment. It will require us to say no to good, very good things in order to say yes to the main thing. But it definitely helps us develop relationships. And in turn, it, re- it makes us into the disciples that Jesus has called us to be. One of the people who were in one of the very first groups of the art of neighboring that we've been talking about for, for a couple weeks went on this experiment and then was so excited to share her story She said that for 12 years, she had lived next to a man that she never knew. But because of this, she went and she decided she was going to make her mission to meet him. So she finally did, and they had a conversation. And she discovered that he was a Holocaust survivor. All the treasure of stories, she said, I've missed out on for 12 years because I never got to know my neighbor. But thankfully, I took the time to do it now treasures and stories are just a few feet away from our doors so i hope that as you continue to pray for your neighbors you would take some time to learn their names and as you are continuing to do that you would take some time for yourself to be quiet and to listen for to what god is calling you to do next if that's learn a name if that's learn a story if that's slow down and be present in your neighborhoods God will tell you what the next step is if we take the time to listen and to love the people around us. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we pray that you might give us a heart for our literal neighbors that live next door to us. That we might make them and their stories a priority that you might use us to engage our communities in new ways, that you might slow us down, 
that you might make us available to those around us and able to be interrupted. That you might help us live more like Jesus. We thank you, God, for the many, many blessings you have given us. And we lift those up to you out loud this morning. I would invite you, if you have joys this morning, to lift those aloud. We praise God for the sunshine. For the healing of Hope's back. Nature, we praise God for nature. It is so beautiful right now. Yes, our crops. Shalene's healing. At the same time, we lift up all the things that are heavy on our hearts this morning, and if you have prayer requests, I invite you to lift those as well. Our great-granddaughters. People affected by storms. God, we lift up all of these joys and these concerns along with those that have not been spoken that we hold in our hearts. We thank you for all of the blessings we have seen this week, mentioned and weather, new marriage, new life. We lift up to you those who are in need of healing, those who are recovering from illness, those who are grieving. We pray for your blessings upon those who are traveling and for the safety of our harvest workers. We leave these prayers at your feet knowing that you are already active in our requests. And we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I would invite you to take some time this morning to praise God through your tithes and offerings.
please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. God of love and mercy, our world is filled with misery and despair. From our bounty, receive these gifts in your service, that those with less may not suffer from want. And when our fortunes are reversed, may we receive with the same grace and gratitude that we have offered our gifts this day. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Some ways that you can be the church and be good neighbors this week. Uh, number one, we still have dignity items needed, right, Jeff? A few? Okay, just a few. So check in the back um, and check those out. Also, the coffee sign-up is now online. So check your inbox if you want to help with coffee for the details on that. And then also, I want to mention to look in your written announcements for the International Travel Scholarship offered by the Library Foundation. Is there another announcement that we need to share with each other? Yeah. Uh, October 22nd will be our fall supper. Perfect. October 22nd. You'll want to mark your calendars for that, for the supper and pie auction. Beautiful. If there's no other announcements, then because of your worship today, may you go out and be the church, be love and be neighbors to all in your path. All God's people say us, us. and amen. Amen. <laughs>